Rift Guardian has found you. What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. I've got an updated version of the Fire Hammerden Crusader build that I've been putting together here on the PTR servers for patch 2.3. The patch is probably a few weeks away, maybe even a month still from going live, and that's because they're still doing a lot of balancing for the various sets and the Kanai Cube and stuff like that. This has given me time to kind of reflect on what I've done up to this point, make some tweaks and stuff like that to, to various builds, and um, yeah, definitely I've made some significant changes to this Fire Hammerden build, including, of course, adding a furnace. So what I've been doing with these builds up to this point is trying to avoid putting in furnace because I knew pretty much it was going to be one of, if not the best, piece to put in for a lot of these builds with the Kanai Cube. So I wanted to come out with alternatives to that, and, uh, and it was actually a lot of fun. But having put in the furnace, yes, definitely, if you have it, it's fantastic to, uh, to have for your weapon slot. The Cinder Code has actually remained here in this build. The reduced resource cost with the Burning Wrath for the Blessed Hammers is really, really a must-have, pretty much, I would think, for anybody that wants to run a fire version of Blessed Hammers. This is the big game changer, though. The Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. I didn't even know this was a thing, but um, now that I've found it, the reduce remaining cooldowns of one of our skills by one second when we hit with a resource spending attack is really, really fantastic. That means with the rapid fire that we have from Blessed Hammers, every time one of those hits, that's one second off of one of our skills that it's on cooldown. And so you're going to see these skills light up really, really fast to be activated again. Even Akarat's Champion will be <laughs> will be something that you can turn on a lot more than you're used to for your Crusader. Pretty much, for the most part, a lot of the other pieces and skills and things like that that I had before are the same. I'm using six pieces of the new Seeker of the Lights set for Crusader, which gives us all kinds of great benefits for our Blessed Hammer and our Falling Sword and stuff like that. The main hand, Johanna's Argument, the Shield Guard of Johanna, and the Gabriel's Vambraces all also must-have pieces for this build. Now something that I was kind of going back and forth while having the the Ring of the Zodiac in the Kanai Cube, I was kind of going back and forth with Focus and Restraint for my rings and Unity and Convention of Elements. And it, it seems very noticeably that Unity and COE is pulling ahead of the performance of what Focus and Restraint can do for this build, which is a really pleasant surprise because I was really beginning to think that Focus and Restraint was going to be like the end for rings. Like, <laughs> like this is it, this is the pair that everybody's going to run in every single build, but not the case actually for, uh, for this Crusader build. The Unity, uh, of course, gives us fantastic survivability and convention of elements, great damage on top of uh, what we're doing overall with this build. In fact, as I've been pushing higher and higher griffs with this build, which is easily much better than it was before, I'm actually finding myself trying to get more damage, not more survivability, from approaching the higher and higher uh, greater rift levels. So I replaced String of Years with, for example, the Witching Hour, and a few of my legendary gems have also changed as well. You may remember I was using like the Gizzard and Esoteric uh, Alteration and stuff like that for my legendary gems. Bane of the Trap definitely was in there before, so that's that hasn't changed. But I'm actually using Tegut, which um, which of course makes sense. Again, the the speed at which we're putting out Blessed Hammers means we're stacking stacks of Tegut really really quickly. And with Furnace, I feel like Bane of the Powerful just is the perfect marriage between these two. Having Furnace and Bane of the Powerful just works out really really well, I think. All right, let's take a look at the skills 
For the Blessed Hammers, like I said, Burning Wrath with the Cinder Coat means really cheap Blessed Hammers. Laws of Valor with Critical. Shield Glare, Zealous Glare, Provoke with Too Scared to Run. These are actually basically doing the exact same thing. The Shield Glare Blind and the Too Scared to Run rune for Provoke is control impairing effects, which is going to activate our Bane of the Trapped. Falling Sword, and I believe the Flurry Rune, is also going to be another way that we should be able to activate Bane of the Trapped. Hurling enemies around and incapacitating them for 5 seconds sounds like controlling pairing effects to me. And of course, Akras Champion with the Prophet Rune, and again with the crazy amounts of reduced cooldown that we have, we are going to see this up a lot. For the passives, Indestructible of course, Finery, Blunt for the increase damage for Blessed Hammers. This is something that I've changed. I actually didn't think that Fervor was going to be all that good for a, uh, a hammer build like this because uh, we already have tons of attack speed, but that 15% cooldown reduction right there, again on top of everywhere else that we can get cooldown reduction, including on our gear like our shoulders and stuff, right? Just means the more that we can get, the better that this build gets really, because we want to have Akras Champion up as much as we possibly can for that extra damage and that survivability, especially from the Prophet Rune. Let's take a look at some gameplay now from the Fire Hammerden Crusader build in action. I wish you luck, hero. Save, march it on! 
I must wait longer.
Thanks for watching this video on my Fire Hammerden Crusader build here on the PTR for patch 2.3. Aside from maybe a legendary gem like change here or there or something like that, uh, I really feel like this is one of, if not the ultimate way to put together a Fire Hammerden build in the upcoming patch. This build has a lot of potential to easily push, I think, into the mid to high 50s for greater rifts and maybe even higher into 60s and beyond, depending on how good of rolls you can get on your gear, how much, of course, crit hit chance and crit hit damage. I don't have a lot, that's why I'm kind of capping off here in the, uh, the high 40s, but uh, make no mistake, this has huge potential to be a fantastic build for the Crusader and the use of the new Seeker of Light set. I want to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Click the like button to support these Diablo 3 videos here on the channel and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next video. Thanks again for watching, my name is Kinetic and I'll see you next time.